Okay, okay, I may have just got a C5 Corvette for my next track car, but I'm still a BMW homer. So I'm gonna go over the five things I absolutely love about my M235 and five things I hate. Here we go. Before we get into it and go absolutely crazy, let me give you a little backstory about the car. I've had it for almost three years. I've done a number of performance modifications to it. I've driven it in a number of places, both at the drag strip, obviously on the street, and I've taken to its track. I've taken it to the track a bunch of times. So I have a lot of experience with this thing. And um, I've come across a lot of things that I love about it, and I've come across a lot of things that I hate. I think we're gonna do the stuff that I hate first, that way I can vent and get it all out, and then I'll make myself feel better in the second half. Maybe you guys too. Number five. Number five thing I hate about this car is you it kicks you into comfort mode when you have the traction control completely off. So if you really want to rip this thing, you take the traction control all the way off and it takes you out all the great sport dampening and throttle response settings and puts you back into comfort mode, which it just drives me nuts. I absolutely hate that. Also, speaking of electronics, I had to take the TPMS sensors out because at the track, I tried lowering the temperature of the tires so then they can get nice and heated up uh, as I've been out on the track for a little while. And then it also would kick me into comfort mode because it said my tire pressures were too low. Now I know there's a way to code it all out and if I get the whole thing, I can do that, but I shouldn't have to do that. This car should be able to do that right off the bat. And that pissed me off. And I'm sure that's not the only case with newer cars. I'm probably, this probably isn't the only car that has this problem, but it just, it ticks me off. Number four. The number four thing that really grinds my gears about this car is that some parts are expensive. Uh, if I wanted to upgrade the high pressure fuel pump at the time that I was thinking of doing that, I think it's like $2,000 to upgrade the high pressure fuel pump just to maybe make a little bit more horsepower. Um, up upgrading the turbos is at least 2,500 bucks. Turbo, singular, sorry. Um, getting the right cold over suspension on this car is like $4,000 and uh, and getting a limited slip differential in this car is 3,000 bucks. So if you add all those performance parts up, um, it's basically what I paid for my Corvette. Number three. The number three thing I hate about this car is the minimal tire width. Um, unlike the M2, this does not have wide fender flares. And uh, in the front, the widest tire I could possibly fit is 235s. And in the rear, the widest tire that I found that I could fit on it was 255. And that's just really not that wide when you're looking at getting into a really good performance car. Uh, comparatively, my Corvette, I could fit 305s, 315s all the way around. I have 275s all the way around. And that makes a huge difference on track. It's just more contact surface the tire has with the, with the ground. And you just can't do that with this. And if you try to go any wider than that, people rub and there's other, other problems that you run into with it. So yeah, that kind of ticks me off about this. Number two. The number two thing that ticks me off about this car is that it doesn't have a limited slip differential. And you could get them from the factory if you paid the extra, but most people didn't. And if you're buying a used one of these, the likelihood that you got one with a limited slip differential is really low. However, even though this isn't an M2 or an M3 or an M4, it's still a performance car. It's a freaking BMW for Christ's sake. Put an LSD in the car. They used to do it in the 90s, used to do it a lot. Most of those cars had LSDs. Put the freaking LSD in the car. Number one. <sighs> All right, now that I've cooled down a little bit, the number one thing that I hate about this car is that it's not an M2. And I didn't think that I wanted an M2 until I drove an M2 and compared the two. And I'll put a link in the description below to that. Um, it's a totally different car. And I thought that, oh, it's the same engine. I can get you know 80% of the performance out of it, but there's, there's more to it than just the engine. And everything that I complained about two through five is basically non-existent on an M2. Um, so yeah, the biggest thing I hate about this car is that it's not an M2. This episode is brought to you by Extreme Powerhouse. Whether you got a BMW like this, an Audi, or a Ford Mustang, check them out. They have a ton of different performance parts. And if you go on there and use my coupon code, LOWBOOST, all one word, you'll get access to some extra special discounts. All right. 
Now let's get into the things I love about this car. Number five. And number five is the power. They are supposedly rated at 320 horsepower at the crank from the factory. However, when we put this on the dyno with stock tune, it did have downpipe, charge pipe, and everything on it, but it was stock tune. It made 323 horsepower to the tire. <laughs> For a stock tune? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm gonna guess that some of those mods added a little bit, but we're still we're stock boost at that point. And uh, my guess is the car makes at least 300 horsepower at the wheels and completely stock trim as it is now, um, which is pretty good. I ran a 13.4 second quarter mile at 106 miles an hour when it was bone stock, which is pretty fast in my personal opinion. Some people might say that that's slow or some people might say that that's a rocket ship to me for what you get that's pretty quick in my opinion and the power is great the turbo spools up quickly and uh it, it just has a lot of power out of the box number four the number four thing i love about this car is the handling now of course when you upgrade a car it's going to become better better handling car if you're doing the right suspension mods but just out of the box this car handles great and it doesn't take anybody can drive the car it's not like a car that's gonna you know that's gonna make you pay for making a mistake it really uh can can handle just about everything you can throw at it and it it really is pretty drivable at the limit which not a lot of cars are you get a you know corvettes or 911s the cars that are really powerful um you don't really see that with this even when i had it modified all the way up the the grannies in the car if you want to keep them on will keep you honest and um yeah, you could do this car is extremely easy to drive. The turn in is great. You just point and shoot basically where you want to go. The only complaint with it is it it will understeer, but you can do some modifications to fix that. Number 3. The number 3 thing that I love about this car is the tunability. I don't even know if that's a real word, but I'm making it up now. Tunability. There it is. Um with without even spending a a considerable amount of money I was able to increase the horsepower at the tire in this car by a hundred uh, you know charge pipe intake front mount intercooler tune and some ethanol in there and we were able to make almost 400 wheel horsepower in the car which was great and I'll put a link in the description below to that video I have a bunch of videos about this car I mean maybe like 15 at this point so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and check all of them out if you're into this kind of car with just those minimal modifications 400 horsepower at the wheels in this car that only weighs like 34 150 pounds definitely packs a punch at the drag strip i was able to run a 12.7 second quarter mile at 113 miles an hour and that was in 36 degree temperatures so it might even have been able to be faster had i had a good day number two the number two thing that i love about the car which a lot of people would argue should be the number one is the looks. I just love the look of the BMWs, the, the kidney grills, the headlights, the body lines, everything that there is to look at this car, I absolutely love. And it, the two series kind of differentiates itself a little bit from the three series and the four series. It just looks a little bit more aggressive, especially with an M235. It, it's basically like it has the M performance package right out of the box. And uh, you know, even though I got another car to replace this. I still think this looks 10 times better than my Corvette. And you guys can fight me in the comments about it. I'm sorry, this just looks better. Number one. What's been pretty cool right now is that I still have this car and I also have the Corvette C5. Um, I've been able to drive them both back to back and really kind of feel the difference between the two. And uh, that's why the number one thing that I love about this car is the way it drives. It drives so well. The gear shift is just buttery smooth. Everything is just works so well together. It's comfortable. Uh, it just the 
being in the car, just the way that it, you, you feel in the seat just hugs you. Everything about the car on the inside and the way that it drives is great. The responsiveness, um, comparatively to the Corvette, the transmission in that is so freaking notchy and clunky. Um, I know it'll handle a lot more power and it, it, in the long run, that'll be a better track car for me, but uh, this is the best driving car I've ever had. And this is the best car I've ever had. And I've had like 40 cars. I've even had a Maserati Gran Turismo and this is 10 times better. Uh, I just love everything there is about the drive and the looks and the feel of this car. And uh, yeah, that's why driving, driving it the way it drives. That's the number one thing I love about this car. And anybody that owns a BMW, especially a stick shift BMW, um, would probably say that is the same thing. They probably would agree with me on that. Listen, there's a reason they call this thing the ultimate driving machine, because that's exactly what it is. No other way to put it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my uploads, whether I'm working on my C5 Corvette, my E36 Turbo LS swap, got a bunch of cars that I work on with my dad, and some reviews I do for some of my friends. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.